Okay, a little update to our last video here. Uh, I didn't think to include this before, but uh, I should have. So when you're assembling these uh, wrist pins, when you're looking at it, there's two things that I wanted to talk about that somebody might have questions. And that's the whole point of these videos. We want to get everything possible. Um, heavens knows I've been on YouTube on places looking for info when you've got that one little thing that's just driving you nuts. Um, so when it comes to these C-clips, the snap rings for installing the wrist pins, some you need to check per your kit, but you can see on this set here, there is, let's get some focus there, there we go. So there's no bevel on it. So when we're looking at these guys, there's not a, a specific bevel that it's made for. Um, so you check the C-clips on yours before you install your snap rings here. Check and see if there's a bevel. If there is a bevel, they generally go out to help seat it so it would face you. Um, the other thing is, is last time I didn't talk about... Um, piston, well, snap ring positioning. Uh, so anyway, you can, once it's in the channel, I always check to make sure that they rotate. Sometimes it takes a little bit of movement. Um, and the reason why I say that, this is from experience from rebuilding a lot of turbos with a lot of tiny clips inside of them. But if you take this guy and you get him in there partially seated, generally they won't rotate because it's it's not free to move in there. But if you get them seated properly on most of them, and again, check, double check, quadruple check, um, make sure that it's actually in there. I usually tap on mine a little bit and make sure that it's not, you know, that it's not somehow crooked in there, one side's out. But again, if you can put your tool on there and spin it, um, then it's probably a pretty good indicator that it's seated in that groove because otherwise it would be smaller. So anyway, those are the two things. I am going to face my pins like this, but they'll probably wind up rotating heavier side down because they do rotate some. Um, but anyway, I, I probably put them in there like that. So again, hope that's helpful, and we will see you on the next go-round. All right, I couldn't resist. Same video, just continuing on. I took the snap ring pliers and I went ahead and I seated this guy partially in there. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that super well. Let's flip on a little light there. Um, so the top part is seated and the bottom part's not. And if I can show you here, if I take my needle nose that I've converted into snap ring pliers and I go ahead and put those in there, and I do a little twisting on it, it won't budge. Now if I take that, and I go ahead, and I properly, and I just, I gotta hold the piston with one hand, so you're getting the benefit of a close up right now. And then I push that in there. Did you see how, you see how that snapped now? Snapped it right in there. Now if I take it, you can tell that width is different, but also I can rotate that. Did you just see what that did? It's kind of hard because the pistons, without being able to grab it, if you've got two hands free, this becomes very easy. But if you watch that, you see how I can rotate it? That means that thing is locked in that groove because it's taken up, it's seated down in there, and therefore it's expanded, it's got more less tension on it and more room to f move. All right, that's a little addendum to that last one, and now we're moving on for real.